Good afternoon again. Last time we had ended up deriving the relationship or the condition for our production sector and we had said that was MRTS or the marginal rate of uh, uh, technical substituting between capital and labor for FEM1 is equals to the MRTS for FEM2 and all those equal to the price ratio in the production sector. And the price for labor is the wage, whilst the price for capital is the R, interest rates. All right? So that was our second condition. Whilst for the consumption sector, we had derived that the MRS between X and Y for James equals to the MRX, um, MRS sorry, between X and Y for Karen equals to the price ratio. The price is of the two, two goods, good X and good Y. And that was our first condition that we started off with. Now, the point of this particular clip is to link up the consumption sector with the production sector. And how do we do that? We could either do it graphically, I will show you the relationship and derive it using uh, graph illustrations, or we could uh, derive it using algebra. Okay, but we will still come to the same relationship and that would be our third con condition of efficiency in our two by two economy, right? Let's start off with the uh, graphical illustration. So what we want to do is to link up the consumption to the production sector. But remember to your first year that we had something called the PPF. All right, where you had the Y sector and the X producing sector normally on your horizontal axis and you had the PPF sort of doing something like that. And we, we had said that if an economy is producing here, then it can afford that. It, it, it's able to do that, but it's not efficient. But if it's producing along the graph, then it's using all its resources efficiently. But if it's, it can't produce outside. So this point, A, is not attainable and a point like C is efficient but a point like B is not efficient so a point like B would essentially be remember to the production sector that we done in the earlier clip would be similar to a point like A in this graph whilst a point like C would be like B and C unfortunately we, we don't represent a point like A in our graph it's just not possible it's not attainable in this box in any case, um, so we know that a point like C or a point like D or a point like, like E, those are all efficient points and points that the economy can afford or can achieve. And remember what we had said for the production sector, we had said that along this line, C, B, E, whatever, all the points along this line are Pareto efficient points, points that a production sector would like to be producing at. So already we can see a relationship not only with Y and X, which is similar to what FEM2 is producing, which is Y, and X there really represents what FEM1 is producing that side, but we also have points along this line being similar to those points along that line. Remember we had said that moving from FEM1 to FEM, uh, from, from, sorry, from FEM X to FEM, FEM Y, we are producing, producing more of X and less and less of Y up until we're producing nothing of Y. Same thing applies here. You can have an economy that's only producing Y, right? But no X. So that economy would be at this point, right? And there it's represented by that point. So this point here would represent this economy where all your resources are used to producing X, which is, pro pro is produced by FEM1, and therefore it would be that point on your PPF. So essentially this point is the same as that point. Sorry, this line is the same as that line, and this point is the same as that point, and this point is the same as that point. So we, can, we could use the PPF to represent our, 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 our Edgeworth box, which we derived for the production sector. Now, how do we then link up this sector to this sector? We could superimpose or juxtapose your indifference curves on your PPF 
try and represent what is going on in the production sector with what consumers want to consume between X and Y. So we could have indifference curves doing something like this. And these would be your community indifference curves. So we would have on average what all consumers in the economy are consuming. Mm -hmm. And remember we had said that the most efficient point that consumers would be uh, consumers are cons consuming would be where your budget line, some budget line, there, what is in their pocket, some budget line would have to come somewhere there and that would represent what they, what they want to consume but what they can also afford to consume. Now, this point, point C, that point is tangent to both, to both the PPF and the indifference curves. Now, at, and the, at that point, the slope of the indifference curves Okay. okay, I can put it in another color. The slope of the indifference curves, okay, or the slope where this indifference curve is actually tangent to that budget line would be represented by that blue line. And we know that slope is Px over Py, okay? That's what we said the slope for the budget line was. But this line also represents the slope of your PPF, all right? And we, call this, we called the slope of the PPF your MRT, Marginal Rate of Transformation, transforming your economy from producing Y into producing X or from producing X into producing only Y. Okay? So, but on the other hand, what we also, what we also know is that from first year is that when we're producing lots of Y, We've got an opportunity cost that we have to pay, and that is of foregoing producing at X. And when we're sort of moving from point to point along our PPF, we are looking at those costs marginally. So the marginal cost of producing Y is somewhere there, the marginal cost of producing uh, Y is somewhere there, keeps on increasing because we're letting go of X. So MRT, which is really the slope of your PPF, also represents the ratio of these costs of producing between X and Y. So MRT really equals to your marginal costs of producing X over marginal costs of producing Y. Okay? And I had just said that, that your MRT, MRT is also tangent to your indifference curves. So your MRT is also equals to that Px over Py from your consumption sector. So in essence, this is a relationship that we would like to, to develop because we also know that Px over Py, Px over Py equals to the marginal, rate, the marginal rate of substituting between X and Y for James, for Karen, for all the other consumers. So Px over Py also equals to MRS between X and Y for all the consumers, consumer one, consumer two, consumer three. And this is your third condition in your two by two um, e economy for efficiency. So it is MRS between X and Y equals to PX over PY, which is this really, and that equals to your MRT mm -hmm. equals to your MCX over MCY. That would be your third condition. And now we've derived all the three conditions, okay, in our two by two by two general equilibrium economy. This represents the consumption sector, this represents the production sector, and this combines the consumption sector here with the production sector there. What we could also do is show you how we could derive the same relationships but algebraically. Okay? From first year, we also learned that when a when we have a perfectly competitive market, we have P equals to MC, price equals to marginal cost. So in this case, we've got two sectors, so we should have the price of X equals to the, the marginal cost of producing X. 
and we should also have the price of Y equals to the marginal cost. This is a perfectly commutative markets. These are perfectly commutative markets where what you're paying as a consumer equals to the same cost that the producers put in in producing the good that you're consuming. So if we've got those conditions, we could also have uh, their ratios being equal, i.e. Px over Py should also be equal to Mcx over Mcy. Mm -hmm. Now, from the consumption sector, we know that Px over Py equals to the marginal rate of substituting between x and y. That we, we, we derived earlier on. That was our first condition. And Mcx over Mcy, we just said that is the slope of our PPF, which is MR, MRT. And yet again, just algebraically, we are deriving the same condition that we derived, which is our condition three in our two by two by two economy.